So the other day a friend of mine asked me to show him how to solder copper pipe together. Just a uh, regular plumbing pipe for your uh, house. Um, so I figured I'd just try doing a video. Um, maybe this can help out some other people. Um, by no means am I a plumber. Um, so take this information um, with a grain of salt. So the tools you'll need propane torch something to clean the pipe with this is like a pipe cleaner or you could use emery cloth sandpaper flux solder a brush or q-tip or something to apply the flux something to light your torch and we can get started. So, you need to clean the pipe really well. That is the key to a really good solder joint. You want to make sure it's dry and clean. So with this pipe cleaner, I just put it in, give it a couple turns, until the copper is nice and bright and shiny. And then do the same for the, uh, the other piece, whether it be a coupler or an elbow, it could be a fitting. So it's nice and shiny. You can also do it with sandpaper and emery cloth. It just takes longer. If you're doing a whole bunch of uh, joints, this saves a lot of time. I really recommend this. So, once your pieces are clean, dry fit them, and then you're going to apply your flux. There's two types of flux. There's a paste flux, and then there's like a, I think it's a, an acid type that uh, is liquid. I have the paste. It's a little cold out in the garage, so this stuff um, won't go on that easy. But just put some on all the way around the joint and when you heat it the flux will melt and it'll flow all the way around the reason that you need to use flux and make sure you get it on all surfaces that you're going to apply solder to the reason why you use flux is it prevents oxidization when you heat the joint and it allows the flux to flow so wherever you apply flux that is where solder will flow so before I actually solder the joint I just want to talk about torches so this is your typical pencil flame torch that you get at the hardware store um, to light it you can use a sparker or you can use a lighter or some sort of some source of ignition and you just spark it and then it turns on and then you adjust the flame and then it gives this is nice for doing um, small joints I wouldn't go any bigger than three quarters of an inch if you need to go beyond three quarters of an inch or an inch pipe you need to get a torch that has a little bit more power and I prefer I like having an automatic torch because I had to do a lot of joints um, for a hot water boiler. So what's nice about that is you just push the button and it's the electronic ignition and it comes on. So I'm just going to use this because it's uh, a little easier especially since I'm recording this. So get your your solder ready. Get a, a little piece out so that you can apply it to the joint once you heat it. Now when you heat the joint you want to make sure you heat the joint here all the way around you don't want to heat the solder a common mistake when people first start off doing any type of soldering whether it's electrical soldering or um, soldering for plumbing is they they think they need to heat the solder you don't you need to heat the joint you heat the joint and you apply the solder to the joint and the, the solder will melt from the heat 
from the heat from the copper being hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this and then apply the solder around the joint. And what will happen is it will wick it in. It'll wick itself in. Now it doesn't matter if your pipe is vertical, um, it, horizontal, the flux will, wherever the flux is, is where the solder will flow to. So once you heat this, give it all the way around, heat it for about a couple seconds. It depends on the size of your torch too. This one, it's quite large, so it'll heat really quickly. The pencil flame, that might take a few more seconds. You do not want to overheat the joint. If you overheat the joint and it starts turning black, like the flux starts burning, that's no good and you have to start over. Because when you overheat the joint, the flux burns and then you start getting oxidization and the flux um, just burns off and you cannot get a good solder joint. The solder ends up not sticking. I'm going to zoom in and I'll just uh, I'll heat the joint and apply the solder. Allow it to set. As you can see, it's all the way around. And it's nice and bright. You do not want solder that is kind of a tarnished, kind of dull color. Um, that means you've overheated the joint and that's not good. What you should do after you've let the joint set, and it only takes a few seconds for it to cool off, and then it's, uh, the solder's hardened and it's set you want to take a wet rag and give it a quick wipe all the way around to wipe off the flux. The reason you do that is the flux actually can cause the copper to corrode a little bit and that's why some joints you see have a little bit of green around the joint. Uh, some people don't wipe it off. I like to wipe it off um, just to prevent the, uh, the corrosion. So see it's nice and strong and you can see that the the solder is all the way around the joint I might have applied a little bit too much because there's a little blob at the bottom and then you can't really see on the inside but if I had a flashlight you could but I actually can see solder all the way to the end of this joint. So that means I know I have a good solder joint. So hopefully this will help out any of you out there who are uh, trying to solder your first uh, joint.